Right, okay. Uh, I thought I'd do a video um, after the last one that looks at um, a little bit more of the basics, the bare basics of the numerical method for solving an equation. So I've written on the board here an equation that you cannot solve algebraically. And that's really the key idea here, that we're looking at equations that where algebra just breaks down. There are no methods that we can employ um, that we've learnt in algebra that will allow us to solve an equation like this, to work out what x must be equal to. And when algebra breaks down, it usually therefore comes to a point where you've got to use numerical methods. Um, they're not always very nice and very easy to use, and often take a lot of number crunching. And that's why you get computers to do most of the dirty work. So if we take this as our example, then using the idea that we looked at in the previous video, you can manipulate this and rearrange it so that we can get x on one side. So you can have e to the minus x is equal to x, just by adding x to both sides. So, using that, okay, as our starting point, then a typical question along these lines might go as a part A, um, show that this equation has a solution between um, 0.2 and 1, for example. Okay, so um, so part A show that this equation has a solution between 0.2 and 1. So that's where we would have said, right, well, f of x is equal to e to the minus x minus x. And then we look at f of 0.2 and we look at f of 1. So this is e to the minus 0.2, take away 0.2, and this is e to the minus 1, take away 1. Okay, so this is harking back to a couple of videos ago, and this method, so minus 0.2, uh, take away 0.2, which gives us 0.6187 dot 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 dot, which is greater than 0. And then e to the minus 1, uh, take away 1, is minus 0.6321, dot, 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 which is clearly negative, okay, less than 0. So we can say that f of x has a root between 0.2 and 1. So the root is somewhere between 0.2 and 1, where alpha is the root, okay? So this would be our part A. Now, looking at um, this equation, you might be well be given a sketch of it. So let's have our y is equal to x. Okay. And then you've got e to the minus x which uh, would look something, well, um, in this case it comes down like this, doesn't it? So, something like that, okay? And we know that that's uh, uh, one, sorry. We know that this solution is somewhere between 0.2 and 1. So let's say uh, this is 0.2 and then 1 so over here. Okay, so you know that the solution is somewhere between 0.2 and 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up, we're going to let um, x equals x1 to be 0.2. 
Okay, so once again, as I said in the previous video, this value is going to be given to you. Okay, so this is given to us. Okay, as a starting value. And the reason why it's given to you and not allowed for you to just like make it up is because, well, obviously the examiner has to work from a mark scheme that would only have one possible uh, set of solutions. Otherwise, you could start with any value you liked and affect, well, within reason. And effectively, that would cause problems for the examiner. Okay, so they give you an X1 to start with. Okay, now we need to work out what x2 is. So we've got this equation here. So what we do is we turn it into a recurrence relation where xn plus 1 is now e to the minus xn. So you've replaced the x on this side with xn and this side with xn plus 1. So it gives you a recurrence relation which allows you to find the next term in the sequence. So when you're doing this, in order to remember you speed it up, to speed up on your calculator, put 0 0.2 in first and then press equals. That will save 0 0.2 in your calculator's memory as the current answer that it's working with. Then we can do the E to the box button. We're using the, on mine, it's the shift E, shift log rather and then minus uh, the answer button and then equals okay and what we get is x2 which is 0.8187 dot, 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 dot. press equals again x3 is 0.4409 dot, dot, dot x4 is 0.6433 dot, dot, dot. x5 is 0.5255 dot, 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 dot. and I'll keep going uh, one more x6 is 0.5912 dot, 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 dot. okay and then you can keep pressing equals as many times as you'd like and your calculator will be homing in on an answer Okay, now one thing to notice in this example is that, well, here uh, we've gone down, so we've got our answer's got smaller, then smaller, then it got larger, then it got smaller, then it got larger, and it will keep on going smaller, larger, smaller, larger, smaller, larger, okay? But the gaps between the two is getting smaller and smaller, okay? So you're homing in, and what that's doing on your graph, on your diagram, is creating That wasn't a very good guess for one, was it? Yes, that's your x2. Always remember you're going curve, line, curve, line. There's your x3. x4, so you can see how we're homing in and getting closer and closer to the solution right in the middle. So in this case, yes, we've got a, 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 an example where we are homing in on an answer. But this no longer looks like a staircase. And in this one is not called a staircase diagram. This is referred to as a cobweb diagram, like a spider's cobweb. Okay, so this is a cobweb diagram. You need to make sure that you're using nice ruled lines, just like I did, right? And um, that you are labeling your graph as you go, okay? 
So this is the process where we have um, we're creating a recurrence relation that will allow us to solve this equation because that's the way that we're doing this. Okay, we're solving this equation, and the solution is 0 0.5 something. Okay, and you can use this method to get as close and as accurate as you like, but you won't ever reach the exact solution. Okay, that's the one drawback. You won't even get the exact solution but you can get as close to it as you like.